Natalie and Curious. Today, um, I'm going to be discussing a very important topic, uh, love, sex, dating, and relationships, in a special segment I would like to call Romance Rescue, where you ask me for love, sex, dating, and relationship advice, and I bestow that amazing advice upon you. Um, and my credentials for dishing out this advice are um, that I am a slut, but like a successful slut. Like I've never had an issue getting laid and I've never really had an issue um, getting into relationships, no matter how difficult or problematic they are. I mean, honestly, like, I just am doing this for fun. I don't, if you don't want dating advice from a transgender model whore, then this is not the podcast for you. However, um, I compiled a list of lots of questions and stories that you guys had for me. You guys were so cool. You sent me in like hundreds of questions. Um, and I picked a couple of them that I figured covered quite a few topics, some from straight guys, some from cisgender people, some from trans people, some from they thems, some from gays, some from girls. So there's like kind of like a, a lot of topics to cover, um, which is great because, you know, I'm not just going to be answering one genre of dating questions. Um, but, uh, let's get into it. But before I get into it, um, I'm going to take a pickle back because, um, I've decided that I cannot answer these questions sober. I don't know why anybody would be sober to talk about love and sex and dating. Like I can't, you know, this is a fun podcast. This isn't like the other podcasts. I like to get drunk alone on my podcast, so I have um, a jar of pickles, not sponsored, and I'm going to do a little pickle ASMR for you. This is me. This is me opening the bottle of pickles. That's me smelling the pickles. Mm, honestly, they smell delicious. I love pickles. And pickles are very phallic, so this is, you know, right on, this is right on track for uh, romance rescue. I'm a sick, twisted person, what can I say? Ready or not. God, God damn. And if you thought that's all I was going to be drinking, you're fucking wrong because I clearly have a drinking problem. <laughs> so I also made myself a little passion fruit cocktail. Um, it's pink lemonade, passion fruit, and vodka. I'm a big vodka girl, so if you ever want to buy me a drink at a bar, vodka. So before we get into it, um, I have my own little piece of dating advice for everybody. And that piece of dating advice is do not have sex with a man who has a dick piercing. And I will tell you why, because the condom will break. And if you have a dick piercing, you're probably a freak of fucking nature and you probably have an STD. And if the condom breaks, you're going to give that STD to the person who you're sleeping with. Um, I'm speaking from experience. I, my genitals are not pierced. However, uh, yeah, don't have sex with guys who have their, a dick piercing. Like they might give you something.
I wouldn't know. Couldn't be me. But don't do it. Oh, yeah. By the way, the passion fruit in the cocktail is because uh, passion fruit's an aphrodisiac. So not only am I getting drunk, but I'm also going to get horny while I answer these questions, which is fucking fabulous. All right. So let's just get into it. Question number one. This question is from a straight man, a straight cisgender man, which is great. Um, and we also share the same name. This person, this person's name is also Teddy, which is lit. So, hey, Teddy, you're rad. I've been hooking up with two girls, and I really like one of them. I broke it off with the other. The question, the question is, sh- my fucking dyslexia. By the way, like, bear with me for this because some of the questions are from people who, like, are clearly not native English speakers, and so they're written in strange English. And even when things are written in English, I barely can read because I'm so severely dyslexic and I am not on Adderall um, yet. Never say never to Adderall. (laughs) Okay. I've been hooking up with two girls, and I really like one of them. I broke it off with the other. The question is, should I tell the first girl about the other or just hope she never finds out? LOL. Here's my answer to this. I think that you definitely shouldn't tell the other girl, the girl that you're dating, the girl that you've chosen about the other girl that you were dating in the beginning of your relationship. Like, there's no reason to upset that person or make them feel uncomfortable about the fact that you were seeing two people at the same time. I think, like, when you're dating people, it is perfectly normal to cycle through multiple people or to be dating people at the same time. I personally do this. Once upon a time, a famous makeup artist named Pat McGrath gave me some great great dating advice. And the dating advice that she gave me was everybody that she knows that's been in love in New York City has had five relationships going simultaneously at the same time. And then like the one that works out is like the one that they choose. And I actually completely and totally agree with this dating advice. I think it's like totally normal to be hooking up or seeing people different people at the same time um however like this might offend the person that you're that you chose that you're currently in a relationship with they probably don't want to hear about it and it's not like it's just not a good idea I don't think like you're harming them by not saying anything because you chose them after all and you're trying to start a new life with this person Fresh, fresh slate, new life, like, why why rehash old drama? Why create drama? It's just not worth it. So my advice to you is keep your fucking mouth shut if you want this relationship to work, okay? Moving on. Next question. Okay, this is a good one. How do you think Zodiacs affect compatibility? Also, like, personal fave and least fave Zodiacs to date. I honestly am not like a huge Zodiac person. I think it's fun. I think it's cute. I don't really think that Zodiac compatibility is like a real thing. However, my current boyfriend, he is a Taurus and I'm a Cancer. And apparently that's like a very good combination chemistry wise. And I would actually agree with that. Like I do love him after all. So that's that. It's obviously not an exact science and it's totally bullshit. Like Zodiacs are total bullshit. I think like most reasonable people know that. However, now that I moved to Los Angeles, I have a newfound admiration for learning about Zodiac signs and stuff. It's like, it's a cute thing to know. Um, But however, signs you need to watch out for, I would say are definitely Geminis. Like Geminis are fucking psychopaths. I'm born on the cusp of Gemini and Cancer and I like swear to God, like, When I was younger, I used to be a crazy Gemini. And the older I've gotten, the more I've settled into being a Cancer. And um, yeah, don't date Geminis. You'll definitely regret it. They're like 
complete psychopaths. Um, signs that are good, though, I would say cancers. I know that people say, like, cancer men are terrible or whatever, but, like, as a cancer, I'm biased. I think that cancers are great. I've had boyfriends who are cancers, and, um, yeah, like, I think if somebody's the same sign as you, you're probably very pretty compatible. If not, like, whatever. It's all bullshit, like, but is it? I don't know. Well, follow your gut, like, I hear Scorpios are good in bed, so take that as you will. I like Tauruses, clearly, I'm like dating one. Okay, next question. How do you reject someone nicely? This is a very good and very important question, and I have had to reject many men in my life, and I will explain to you how I personally do it. I think like the right way to reject somebody is to say the connection that we share is not the connection that I'm looking for I think that's the nicest thing that you can say to somebody it's to the point it is vague enough that it's not you know whatever all you have to say is that like I like you but the connection that we share is not the connection that I'm looking for um and I think that's completely and totally reasonable um I also am a big proponent of ghosting like I don't think everyone's like ghosting isn't nice like blah 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 like so what okay like ghosting somebody is a is an answer you know like me not speaking to you anymore is me letting you know I'm not interested anymore period so I think ghosting is a response yeah I think like you always can accompany that with like a compliment too you can always be like I, even though this isn't working out, um, or I really like you, I think you're really smart, I think you're really attractive, however, I just don't feel like the connection that we share is the connection that I'm looking for, you know, like, that line works perfectly, just add, like, a nice thing to say on top of that, so it doesn't sound so sort of, like, bleak and grim, you know, like, give them a compliment, tell them something that you possibly like about them, and then, you know, there's your answer. Okay, so now some of these are a little bit longer um, questions. And oh, there's a moth. Ow. You have to kill the moths though because they'll eat your sweaters. You know, oh, okay, wait, I see it. I'm coming back. I'm going to fight, kill this moth. Oh, yeah, bitch. I'm killing all the moths because I have nice clothes and the moths will eat the silks, they'll eat the sweaters, they'll eat the wool. Like, no. Like if you like if you have nice clothes, you have to kill the moths. And I don't care if it's a bug, I'll fucking kill it. I don't care. I'm ruthless. Alrighty, so here are some more longer questions. Um, I like these because they go into a little bit more detail. My boyfriend has been back in his home country, Colombia, since December. He was supposed to come back January, but kept pushing back the date. We have been together over a year and had a great relationship. He started to get distant texting me and then eventually texted me saying that he saw his ex-girlfriend in Colombia and he thinks it's not fair to me or to her, so he wants to be alone for some time and not have to choose. He tells me he realized he didn't love her anymore and he loves me and I mean a lot to him. I asked him if he wants to be with me. He didn't say no. He, he said that he wants to, he wants some time and asked me if I would give it to him. I haven't heard from him in over a month now. He is also in the last semester of grad school, which is also stressful, and I know he's going through a lot and having a quarter-life crisis. Should I reach out to him? What should I say? And does he really just want to be with his ex? I really love him, and we had a great thing together. Um, first of all, I would like to apologize to you because – that relationship is done for over gonzo like you need to forget it and i'm going to tell you a few reasons why first of all he is in colombia and i'm guessing wherever you are it is not colombia and he also hasn't spoken to you in a month and he also is flirting with his ex-girlfriend in colombia bitch it's done like don't waste your time on this man like, you deserve better than a guy who is halfway across the world ghosting you for an entire month and speaking to his ex-girlfriend. I know you guys felt like you had something special together, 
But as far as I'm concerned, like it's over and you have to have enough, enough self-respect to be like, I'm walking away from this. You don't have to give them an explanation. You don't have to say anything. Just like leave it alone. Okay. Like it's done. Like he's in Colombia. Leave that boy in Colombia with his ex-girlfriend, whatever. There are 8 billion people on this earth and 50% of those people are men and I promise you, you, you won't have an issue finding somebody else. I understand the connection was special, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, like all a connection is, is chemicals in your brain. It's nothing more, nothing less. So yeah, it was a great year. Take it for what it was and move on. I know that's like kind of a cunty answer, but you know, I'm here to be real with you. I'm not here to, I'm not here to be nice to you. This is, I'm like the Dr. Phil of dating advice. Like I'm going to tell it like it is. I know Dr. Phil gets a lot of heat, but I sort of low key like him. Would you fuck? Here's a good question for you guys. Would you tap Dr. Phil? I would personally. Hi, Teddy. I'm such a fan of what you are doing for the community. Seeing your stories reminds me that trans people are beautiful and successful people. Also love seeing another Massachusetts trans girl killing it. Thank you. Something I always struggle with is when to disclose being trans. When should people disclose? Even if you've had bottom surgery, I think it's necessary for safety precautions. But oftentimes, people don't want to learn about us when they're told who we are. I know I shouldn't feel like I'm better off without them, but it does get me down to know that so many people will turn me down just for being trans, even if I've had bottom surgery. How do you deal with this? Um, I definitely want to say I understand your struggle because I have absolutely been there as a trans woman myself. However, um, Somebody who is going to reject you for being trans is not somebody that you want to be spending time with in the first place. Um, But in terms of when to disclose, I would say that after the first date is okay. I don't think you need to like tell somebody up front that you're trans. I don't think that that's an important thing to do. You're entitled to your own privacy about your own body, but also be reasonable. Like if you know that you're like, Like, be real with yourself. Like, if you're clocky, like, if you look like you are a transgender individual, like, when you show up to that date from that guy that you met on Tinder, even if your pictures are fish as fuck, people are going to know that you or that man or that woman or whoever is going to know that you are trans or maybe is going to be suspicious of the fact that you might possibly be trans. So, first of all, be real with yourself if you even have the capacity to um, hide that from somebody or not. Second off, secondly, um, I think like the most appropriate time to say something is probably like before the first three dates. Um, but I mean, excuse me, like before the third date. So I think like three is the magic number in terms of dating. I think like, you know, You should be disclosing that information before you get sexually involved. And I'm not talking about kissing. I think kissing is fine, like whatever. But um, if you're going to if you're going to have oral sex, if you are going to have penetrative sex, like you need to disclose that information prior to uh, prior to that happening. And I'll explain why, because you're putting yourself in a dangerous situation for starters and also because do you really want to give your body up to somebody who like isn't going to accept you for who you are? Because at the end of the day, if you're considering actually dating this person, um, it's important that they know some of the stuff about you. Um, I'm somebody who used to not disclose to people and I'm like, I live with a lot of regrets about doing that. Uh, I disclosed when I felt comfortable doing it. I didn't disclose when I didn't feel comfortable doing it. But at the end of the day, I still put myself in some very risky, very shady situations. I thought if I disclosed I was trans, I was going to like lose my entire livelihood. I had a lot on the line because I was like a top model. And I thought that I couldn't be a successful model or a successful top model if people knew that I was transgender. I thought people would never want to date me. I thought people would never want to book me. I thought like I would lose out on a lot of things in life. However, we are living in 2021. 
but uh you know you should be proud to be trans and you should have confidence in who you are and if you want somebody to love you you want them to love you for every part about you not just the fact that you're you know beautiful or smart but also because of your history so that's my true advice on that is you know be be real with the people that you choose to have in your life you know whether that's your friends or your family or people that you love and you know if somebody rejects you for being trans like at the end of the day you're just you're be, you're beating the issue to the punch anyways like if they're not gonna if after the first date or the third date like if they have an issue with you being trans after they've gotten to know you and they still have an issue with you being trans that's like your signifier that this like person is like not worth your time in the first place and if anybody is attracted to you for what hole they can penetrate you in or whatever then like they're just not worth your time you know like move on Um, there are a lot of boys out there and there are a lot of boys who I think you would be surprised will accept you for being trans. It's definitely harder for sure. It complicates things and at times it can feel incredibly unfair. However, like be persistent, be stand, be proud in who you are, keep going. In terms of having bottom surgery, that's like, that's hard to say because at the end of the day, like if you have had bottom surgery you have completely transitioned into the gender that you uh, know you are. And if you are a passable, if you're passable also with that bottom surgery and I don't, yeah, I don't, that, that bo- having bottom surgery and disclosing to people is really complicated. I would say like, I would say the same rules apply for if you didn't have bottom surgery, you know, just be careful, you know, like you don't want to get killed. And unfortunately people like us get killed people are to be quite frank very insecure about the idea that they're attracted to people like us but yeah it's not fair it's bullshit it sucks but you'll figure it out um and don't be afraid to disclose there's nothing wrong with being trans it's nothing to be ashamed of it sucks that people will reject it will reject us for it but people will find a million reasons to reject us anyways like cisgender women and cisgender men get rejected for like dumb shit all the time so like you being rejected for being trans is like just another thing rejection is hard for everybody like it's just a fact of life I've learned to accept the fact that not everybody is going to be into me it's taken a long time to get to that point but like it's fine it doesn't hurt me anymore and I'm very lucky because I've found people and you know there's a guy in the room next to me who like loves me for who I am and I love him for who he is. And he's like totally not perfect either. But that's okay. You know, that's what love is. Okay, next question. <sighs> How do I tell my dear but still sort of new friend that they're the toxic one in their relationship? I love this question. Um, this is such a great question. Um, and you're not going to like my answer. You're not going to say anything to them, first of all, because they're a new friend. And second of all, because it's not your fucking place, like period. Like it's not your place to inject yourself into their love life and their dating life and their relationship unless they explicitly ask you for your opinion or your advice. If they explicitly ask you for their opinion or for, excuse me, for your opinion or your advice, then that's an appropriate time to give your opinion um, and do it in a way that's gentle, do it in a way that's nice, do it in a way that doesn't, you know, offend them or hurt them, Um, you know, be a good friend and let them know gently that they're being toxic if they ask. But if they're not asking, you're putting yourself in a situation where you're dealing out advice that they don't want to hear. Like I'm, I'm toxic at times and I just want my friends to blindly agree with me that what I'm doing is right even if it's not and that's what friends do is sometimes friends you know when they see something toxic they just suck it up because they're friends with that person and they know it's wrong but like whatever you support your friends even when they're being shitty sometimes um 
but also it's important to check your friends as well. I understand that. But it depends on the severity of the toxicity, you know? Like, if somebody is doing, if your friend is doing something that is going to jeopardize, jeopardize their health, jeopardize their safety, or jeopardize um, somebody else's safety, or get them, like, arrested or something, like, if your friend is beating the shit out of their partner, yeah, like, say something. Like, that's not appropriate. But also, at the same time, too, like, know your place. Um, I think that's, like, the best advice I could possibly give on that. You know, just be be reasonable. <laughs> you know? All right, all right, all right. Next question. <sighs> this is a long one. I met a boy at a dinner party last weekend. Six people, small, faxed up. He was the he was the host and Okay, here we go. Sorry, the shot hit me, so I was like, oof, girl. <laughs> I met a boy at a dinner party last weekend, six people, small, vaxxed up. He was the host, and it was the first time we met. His playlist all night made my knees weak, and I haven't been able to stop thinking about him since that night. We're all in a group chat now. How do I make the move without disrupting the friend flow of the group? Also, I have trauma with rejection, and I'm terrified of him rejecting me. Help me out, queen. Another great question. Um, so it sounds like this guy that you have a crush on, um, maybe he doesn't know that you have a crush on him or an attraction to him. You know that he likes music. And you like the same music that he likes. So here's what I would do. What I would do is you already have his number because you're in a group chat. I would text him separately from the group chat and text him being like, hey, I heard this song. I think you would really like it. I think that's a really sweet and personal thing to do is sending somebody a song that um, you think they might like. Just be like, hey, I heard this song. It reminded me of you or I think you would enjoy this song but do it don't do it in the group text or the group chat don't do it in person like you have his number because you're in the group chat text him separately on your own you know also don't be afraid to like rev up the flir the flirtation you know the next time you see him like make eyes at him sort of gauge where he's at um especially if you're like enamored with this guy and if you want to take things a step further, my recommendation is uh, ask him to go to a sort of music event. Um, I know that quarantine has just ended and things are just starting to open up, but I think like some wise advice is, or something I would do personally at least, is I would reach out to that guy and be like, hey, I'm going to this underground party or hey, I'm going to see this DJ or hey, I'm going to see this band or a jazz show or like whatever. Like stuff is starting to happen. Um, things are starting to open up a little. And I would say that that is a good idea in terms of getting that person to do something one on one with you. That's also sort of like fun and romantic and cute and up the same alley just make sure that you're sending the music that they like or that you would assume that they like because um music taste is kind of important and if people just started sending me songs that I didn't like I would sort of be like ew like I don't like their taste in music like bye you know so that's my advice to you um I know that getting rejected sucks but if you do it in sort of like a friendly way where it's like semi-flirtatious but also semi-platonic even if they you feel like you're being rejected or whatever you're not going like too far you understand but you're still trying to like rev up the connection in the relationship and I don't think that that that's a bad thing at all you know I think you're I think that's a good thing um yeah next question right another good question when is it too soon to say I love you? Um, I think too soon is – it really depends because we all feel love and connections at different times, of course. Like there are some people who feel it like on the first night. There are other people who feel it after like – a year of knowing somebody it really just depends I would say like for telling somebody that you love them timing is 
everything. So I think like you need to be able to gauge that person's response uh, or how they might feel. And I think it also depends on how much time you're spending together um, as well. If you're spending every single day together, I would say, you know, maybe you can start to hint at a deeper affection after three weeks. I always say three is the magic number. Just like Wendy Williams says this too, but I agree with Wendy Williams. And this was my rule even before I listened, started listening to Wendy Williams. And also Wendy Williams is a cancer. So period, cancer energy. We know, we know a thing or two about sensitivity. We're sensitive, sensitive spirits have another sip of this passion fruit drink mm. <laughs> I made it so strong um yeah so I would say like after three months if you're not feeling like you're falling in love with that person or you're not feeling like it's going anywhere that's like a time to end it I think after three months if you feel like you're in love with that person that's like the right time to – you have to say something by three months because if the other person doesn't feel the same way about you after three months, like it's it's not going to happen. You know, like they've known you for long enough at this point where they will have like an opinion about how they feel about you and I think that's definitely like the right time to say something. Um, yeah, but also, you know, be careful because – we feel like we're in love. Oftentimes it's infatuation. So you want to be really careful on that front because you don't want to put yourself in a, a position where you say something too soon and scare that person off. Because when people have told me that they love me too soon, it freaks me out and it makes me like retreat into myself. And also like, I'm like, okay, this person's fucking crazy. They said that they love me. They're not reading my energy properly. Like I need to like, I need to go, you know? So yeah, you have to you have to know when the right time is. You have to be able to read that other person. And I would say like the right time to tell somebody that you love them, if you're going to say it, is at a time where you're both feeling like an incredible connection um, and you're one-on-one. -on -one. So after you've had an amazing adventure together or you've had a great night together and you're one-on-one, -on -one, after you've known each other for long enough, Oh my God, excuse me. Um, I was like basically just like inner burping because that shot, oof, girl, got me. Um, and that cocktail got me too. So I'm like burping and stuff. Um, yeah. So that's my opinion on that. I think I answered it, right? Maybe I suck at this. Maybe I shouldn't be giving anybody dating advice, but I think I should. I have a calling to give people love advice. I, I feel like the matchmaker in Mulan, except wiser. You know, she wasn't a very good matchmaker, but I feel like I'm like a better match. I feel like I'm like a better matchmaking skills than the Mulan lady, but I don't know. I'm also poopy and weird. Next question. Hi, with three eyes. So, with three O's. I have a fuck buddy, right? Comma. And he's like totally a fuck boy. The other day he was telling me about his other fuck dates and I was like, okay, shouty. But I think he's really into me. He likes to sleep and cuddle and kisses and dinner dates. So why am I just a fuck buddy? Or he's afraid of commitment? I don't know. I think we've all been in a situation like this. Also, I'm sorry for marking, mocking the way you like wrote that. I just am a mean and a bully. Um, we've all been in a situation like this where we've all had a fuck buddy who sort of treats us like a semi girlfriend, semi boyfriend, like a semi relationship. And um, it's very confusing. It sounds like, you want it to be more than just a um than just a friends with benefits that's what it sounds like to me that's what I'm getting from what you're asking this question um I think that there are some 
people out there, particularly men, who want to have the perks of being in a relationship without the commitment of being in a relationship, which I totally understand as a whore myself. Um, but I think... I think that if he wanted, it depends on how much time you've been together. Like if you've been together for a while and he's not claiming you, like there's your answer right there. Like men, if they want to be exclusive with somebody, will like claim them. But also like take the initiative yourself, I guess at this point, depending on how long you've been a fuck buddy with this person. And maybe just like ask them like, hey, like we're doing all these things together. Like do you want to possibly be exclusive? Is that something that you want to explore with me? And I think that you're, they'll give you an honest answer. And if the answer is like, no, then maybe get out of it, you know, because you're just going to get your feelings hurt at the end or just measure your expectations and be like, oh, okay, like whatever. Like I'm down to keep hooking up. Like it just really depends on what you want at the end of the day. But it sounds like to me, like you want it to be more than just a, fuck a buddy relationship and if this person's a notorious fuck boy like you kind of already know what you're getting yourself into and it sounds like you kind of already know already know the answer okay so next question what is the best solution if your boyfriend is coming too fast and how do you deal with it without hurting his feelings um also another thing we've all been there where if you're especially if you are a bottom I guess um, having a partner who ejaculates too quickly, like we've all been there, we've all had that issue. Um, there are a few things that you can do. Um, thing number one, you can wear condoms. I don't know if you guys are wearing condoms or not. It sounds like your boyfriend, girlfriend, a girl, boyfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend, like whatever you are. I didn't even check to see your gender. I just saw the question. Thought it was a good question. Um, I think that. That is a good, I mean, yeah, wearing a condom is a good solution because it sort of puts a barrier between the penis and you. So it decreases the amount of sensation that the penis feels. Therefore, you will be able to, or that your partner will be able to last quite a bit longer. That's typically what happens with condoms. Um, but also if this is person is your boyfriend and you're in a relationship together, you guys should have an open line of communication regardless. So you should be able to say to that person, Hey, listen, um, you are ejaculating too quickly. It's making me feel like I can't enjoy sex in the same way or in the way that I'd like to. And I would appreciate it if we worked on this together. You know, don't be mean about it, but be direct about what you want. Like having good sex is really important in a relationship and it's kind of the glue that keeps the relationship together, the sexual chemistry. So I would definitely... I would definitely say something, you know, if you love this person and this person loves you back, you're going to be able to figure that out. Um, my advice on a solution to that person coming too quickly is people know when they're about to come, you know, it doesn't just happen like that, you know, like, so if he feels like he's getting close, tell him to vocalize that to you. So that way you can, can, can sort of edge him. Um, you can, you know, when he feels like he's about to come, then you slow down or you stop for a few seconds, you know, like make sure that he is not getting when he, when he feels like he's getting close, you need to say like, hey, slow down. And that will definitely help, I think. Yeah. So I think just communicating during sex is kind of the answer to your question on how to make that work. Um, but of course, you know, let you have to let them know. Um, that this is an issue and if they love you they'll fix it for you if they want to stay with you you know next question okay it goes like this I really need advice at getting to know men I really try to ask the other person's interest you know what they do you know what they want how it's going blah blah and giving some of mine to of course this person is clearly not a native English speaker when they're writing this. The deal is that I always struggle with the motherfucking gay motherfucker gay cult, gay men culture of mask for mask. 
I mean, I can't help it. I like men, but as a very gorgeous twink that really enjoys his own persona, how can I attract and interact with people that I like without losing my own self? Um, another good question. Um, and my answer is it depends on the kind of genre of man that you're trying to attract or the genre of person that you want to attract. Um, we've all had to sort of like, I think, you know, I've definitely can speak to this. Like I've had to change my aesthetics or change the way I dress or change the way I do makeup to attract certain types of men. Um, if the men that you're attracted to are attracted to other masculine men, that might be your signal to, you know, mask up. However, if you don't want to change yourself and you want to remain the same and you don't want to become more masculine for, to attract those partners, it's just going, you're just going to face a lot more rejection. Um, but who knows, like maybe you'll find somebody who is really masked, who's really into you being like, you know, a femme twink or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just going to maybe perhaps take more time and be a little bit more challenging. Um, but also like, you know, the game of attraction is a game at the end of the day. And you're going to have to at times compromise and you know, change yourself perhaps a little bit for your partners. And I don't think that there's anything, you know, wrong with that. I think it's okay to like when you, you know, initially meet somebody or if you're single and you're desperate to attract a certain type of person or you really want to attract that certain type of person to just be what they want in the beginning. And then like the more you get to know them, the more you can sort of reveal yourself anyway, it, like anyways, because that's what people do regardless, you know, whether it's like, a aesthetic change or like a whatever you know people do what they do to get the people that they want you know they play the game and uh then they are able to snag that person and then or you know hook up with those people that they want and then they can sort of come back into themselves but you know if you don't want to lose yourself in the process of doing that, which I totally understand, you know, you're just going to have to be patient, um, bottom line and wait for somebody who is your type, but also interested in you and you're their type. And that just takes time. Of course, you know, like I, I, th I know like in this online and the idea of hookup culture, it's supposed to be so easy to find somebody that's totally not true. It is so hard to find somebody. You have to go through like thousands of people, <laughs> in 2021 before you meet somebody that's right for you. You know, it's just sort of is the name of the game in the online dating sphere. Next question. I'm in an excellent, loving, long-term relationship with the fella of my dreams. He makes me feel comfortable. He makes me feel sexy. I'm physically and emotionally attracted to him. All is well in so many ways, and I still fake orgasms sometimes. How do I stop? I know the answer is literally just stop doing it, and that's all well and good, but also it's not. You don't think it's weird just to stop having orgasms as often? You don't think that that'll make your partner feel bad? It's definitely not cool to tell them. It's definitely not cool to tell him, hey, man, who trusts me and I've been faking intimacy for the past three years, please continue trusting me in the same way. It just feels so fraught and I don't want to stop, but I just feel like I can't. Um, what if I never come again and he never wants me to have sex again because I never come? Um, so much anxiety about this. Anyways, you're doing great. Love your podcast. Looking forward to the drunk, <laughs> the drunk pod. Um, once again, I would say the answer to this is just like an open line of communication. If your partner isn't giving you orgasms and you have been faking them for a long time, like if you guys love each other, like you'll figure it out together, you know? And if you feel like you're incapable of orgasming with this partner, then maybe it's time to start looking for a new partner. Um, as I said before, sex is kind of like the glue that holds the relationship together. And... Um, if you're not having fulfilling sexual interactions with a person that you love, that love is going to start to dwindle and turn into like a 
friendship sort of situation. I think like orgasms in terms of being a woman, like, and I'm speaking from experience as a trans woman who's been on estrogen for like nearly 11 years, um, ebb and flow. So I think it really just sort of depends on, uh, yeah, like I definitely go through periods where I have a lot of sex and it doesn't feel like super good. And then, you know, I'll have a month of like incredible sex where I'm orgasming or whatever. I think you just need to learn to spice up the connection with your partner. And also don't be afraid to teach your partner about like what gives you an orgasm, what turns you on. Also, like if that means you touching yourself or pleasuring yourself while you're having sex with that person, that's like not an uncommon thing, you know, like sometimes like your partner just doesn't hit you in the right spot and you got to, you know, touch, you know, help the situation out a little bit so that way you can orgasm. And I think that that's totally reasonable and totally normal and I, yeah, talk to them, let them know. And if it's still, if you're, if you're trying everything in the book and it's still not working out, like you need to find a new partner period, even if you love that person, but you know, an open line of communication, especially when it comes to sex is very important, important at maintaining a healthy relationship in my personal opinion. I'm sure in everybody else's personal opinion as well. Okay. Next question. Normally, I would never do this kind of thing, but I seriously love you, slut. So here we go. Thank you. Thanks, queen. JK. I have trouble with vulnerability and intimacy. Growing up, I had a terrible body dysmorphia issue, and to this day, it's still a struggle with body image issues. I've learned to accept being a hot-ass bitch, and I need to love myself. Yet, when it comes to relationships, I've realized I constantly still have like this mental wall up, and I'm constantly on guard still. Ergo, I tend to friend zone. It's been a constant pattern, and I recognize it. But the walls have been up for so long and I have no idea how to, well, just not. My question is, I guess, any tips on getting out of your own head and being able to get over that anxiety involving intimacy and being vulnerable? As a trans woman who has experienced like a lot of trauma as a young person, um, my parents are also divorced um, or and, you know, I've had like a, a an enormous amount of intimacy issues, especially when it comes to dating men um, and loving myself or whatever and being vulnerable. I think like my honest answer is it just takes time. Like it just takes work. It takes time. It's not easy. It's challenging. Um, yeah, it's hard. And things are definitely not going to be, things are not going to be easy. Um, and it's really hard to get over that. It's really difficult to be vulnerable with somebody, but also I think something that helps or has helped me personally is knowing a partner for a long time. Like the longer I get to know somebody, the more I can be comfortable with them and the more I can be vulnerable with them. So maybe that means like just spending more time with your partners And really establishing that, you know, connection with them. So that way you can be more vulnerable with them when it comes to, you know, what what is the right time to do that. Uh, That's my answer to that, I would say. You know, like just give it time. Get to know your partners better. Establish like a stronger connection with them. And the more time you spend with them, the more the friendship element will develop and you'll be able to feel comfortable with them. It's just going to take time um, and you're going to figure it out. Don't worry. Like you got this. Thoughts on opening up a relationship. The motivation behind this isn't that we have relationship problems, just want to have some fun. However, it would be a big step and I'm nervous that things could go wrong. Have been together for seven years. Um... If you'd like to open up a relationship and it's been seven years and you feel like you're going to cheat on your partner either way, like if you feel like either the relationship is doomed or you're going to cheat on them and you'd like to open up the relationship, like I say, like what's stopping you? Um, I don't really believe in open relationships. However, I think there are certain circumstances that make like 
opening up a relationship okay um it sounds like you guys have been together for so long now if this is something you're both mutually comfortable with um yeah I say why not you know just use use discretion don't like rub it in your partner's face that you're hooking up with somebody else um if you both agree to be in the open relationship in terms of opening that relationship up it's just gonna it's just about compromise and conversation and being able to do that um yeah so that's what I would say uh you know be real with your partner about what you want if you feel like it's doomed if you don't open it up then open it up um and if you open it up here's the tricky part is if you open it up and you realize you don't actually want to be with that person then that's also very telling then obviously you break up with that partner Anyways, I think you got this. Don't worry about it. You know, just be just be real with them and don't be afraid to, you know, do what you have to do to make it work if you want it to work, you know, if you love that person. Excuse me. I had um, shit in my teeth. And, um, not only did my boyfriend not say anything, but I didn't even personally notice it. And so I'm going to look so stupid in this video, but whatever, like I'm not shooting this again. It is what it is. I, I had stuff in my teeth. Suck. I'm, I have to learn to suck that up. It's going to be fine. Okay. Whatever. Next question. Okay, please. So I was having fun chatting with this guy through Tinder Passport and it was real, real cute for a couple weeks until he stopped talking. There hasn't been a full ghosting yet, but definitely slowed down boots. Should I try and talk to him and tell him how I feel? Is it too early to give up even though I'd rather not? Girl. You met a guy on Tinder Passport, which means he's, like, not even close to you. And he's, like, not even that interested in talking to you, clearly. So it's done, you know? Like, don't try anything. Like, it's over. He's not interested in you. If he was, he would continue talking to you. But also, even if he was interested in you, just convincing a guy to, like, travel for you. <laughs> no, bitch forget it you need to find somebody local you need to find the local dick honey like don't waste your time next question hi first of all love your podcast thank you okay so let me give you a little backstory well I have a huge crush on a guy who is in my swimming team I think he's sending me signals. He constantly looks at me, etc., but rarely talks to me. I think he might be too shy. I'm also scared that he is going to use me only for sex and actually won't care about me. Um, yeah, I think like, I think that if he likes you, like the, here's the difficult thing is men like stare at everybody, you know, like they stare at any bitch with tits and a pussy like they'll look at anything you know like men are just staring at everything um they're very visual um but if you feel like you're making eyes with him and making eye contact with him frequently that's probably a good sign that might mean that he he likes you um and if he's being a little standoffish with you it probably is because he's shy it probably is because he has an attraction to you um in terms of you being scared if you advance things with him, if he's going to be a fuck boy or not and just like want to use you for sex, you're not going to know that until you get to that point. So don't even worry about that yet. Like the first thing that you need to focus on is just gauging where he's at in the first place. And that's only going to happen with a little bit of flirtation. So the next time you see him, um, Think of a think of something cute and witty and clever to say to him and try to start developing a friendly and flirtatious dialogue with this person and that will sort of help you to gauge like if 
a flirtation is even possible, how he feels about you and what he wants from you. But you're not going to know until you, you know, initiate the flirtation. So don't be afraid. Grow some balls. He may be shy, but that doesn't mean you have to be shy. Just be nice and be cool and uh, you're going to get what you want. Or not, but if you don't get what you want, there's nothing wrong with that either. Next question. There was the super rich Ivy League dude that I matched with on a dating app around six months ago. We really hit it off. We would go on like six-hour phone calls, but he ghosted me after a month and a half of us meeting. He's gone to another country to study, and he won't be back until mid-June or July, but I really want to meet him again. I don't care if he's in a relationship or something casual. Any advice on how I could do that? Okay, well, if he's in another country, obviously, like, it's it's done while he's, like, in the other country and he goes to you. But if he comes back in mid-June or July, like, I think it's totally appropriate for you to just, like, send a hey, what's up text. And if he doesn't respond to the text, like, then you know it's done. You know, don't, like, pu- don't try too hard. You're going to make yourself look like an idiot, like, if you push it too too hard. Um, but also like, it doesn't hurt to try, I guess, you know, like I say, I say text him once, text him one time, maybe with like a cute mirror selfie or something where you're looking like fish, like, you know, cute and hot and sexy. Um, and you know, let him know that you're interested and then, um, if he doesn't respond, there's your answer. And if he does respond, then good for you. It's a good thing that you sent that text, you know, and maybe you might get lucky in June or July, but that's a ways away. So, you know, just calm your tits for now. Don't worry about it. I'd move on to other men or other women or like whatever. Oh yeah. It's a dude. Yeah. Move on to other men. Okay. So Teddy, He's my flatmate and he has a girlfriend who basically lives here, but he's hot as fuck and we have a weird connection. I can't really explain it, but I just feel it that we would have really amazing sex. Also, I haven't started to medically transition yet, so I'm 100% clocky. Um, yeah, I've been in a situation before. I've been in a few situations before where I've like lived with somebody or stayed with somebody and started to develop like a romantic slash sexual connection with that person, started to develop what I thought was sexual chemistry. Don't let it fool you. Spending a lot of time with somebody and living with somebody like oftentimes does that to you. It's just a weird human thing. But like You are going to, first of all, fuck up your living situation if you try to pursue this. And second of all, like, he has a girlfriend. Like, he chose her. Like, if you try to make a move on him or try to break up that relationship or put yourself in a situation that's, like, going to compromise that relationship, that girlfriend is going to come for you and, like, set you on fucking fire or something. Like, and I'm only saying this because that has recently happened to me where there was a gay guy in my friend group who was texting my boyfriend asking to suck his dick while we were together not once not twice but three times and um also on his birthday and he saw that we were together and texted him anyways to hang out and obviously hook up because he texted him at five o'clock in the morning And this is a guy who called, this is a guy who was my friend. So I felt like it was a complete and total betrayal. So when I saw this guy, I said hello to everybody, like in my friend group, it was just a few people there, just like seven people there. And I said hello to everybody. I was like, hi, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. And then when I got to him, I fucking smacked the shit out of him. I slapped that man's face into the next fucking dimension and I'd do it again. I would, honestly, because he betrayed me. He betrayed my friendship, but also he was doing something that he knew was wrong to get sexual gratification. I know that you haven't started medically transitioning yet, but like, do not inject yourself into this person's relationship. And also, even though you may feel like you have sexual chemistry, like, don't mistake it. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of, a lot of men 
in particular, and I know you're trans, but you haven't started medically transitioning yet, and the hormones play a huge role in how you feel and how you feel sexually about people. Um, a lot of people, like, let me excuse, like, excuse myself, not a lot of men, a lot of people who have t- a lot of testosterone oftentimes feel that they are being flirted with when they are, in fact, not being flirted with, and they are that person is just being nice to them. You know, I think your roommate is probably just being nice to you and probably doesn't want to fuck you anyways. That is like, first of all, your roommate, your living situation, your housing. Um, and that person's in a relationship. They're completely off limits. Don't do it. Don't try it. Don't pursue it. You are going to fuck yourself over in the process and you're going to get everybody to hate you. And that's not a good place to be. And if I was the girlfriend of that guy and I found out that like their roommate was trying to fuck them, I would be infuriated and I would slap you into the next dimension too. So don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Bad. Bad tranny. Stop yourself, girl. And get on some hormones. Okay, next question. I love my boyfriend, but after five years of a relationship, sometimes I crave other guys' dick. What is the best way to start this kind of conversation? Um, you have two options. So your options are you can either open up the relationship or you can end the relationship. Um I think it's perfectly natural after being with somebody for a long time to feel like you have sexual attractions to other people. It's only human. I don't think I don't think anybody would blame you for feeling that way. But if it's getting to a point where you feel like you're going to be unloyal or unfaithful, that's when you need to start having that conversation of like maybe it's time to like open shit up. Maybe it's time to maybe it's time to change the dynamic of the relationship or just flat out end the relationship. But that's, you know, first of all, investigate the way you feel and then go and approach your partner about how they, about how you feel. You know, you have to be honest with your partner about these things and it might hurt them, but I think it's also like totally normal. And if you do it in a, like a nice control, reasonable way on, on a day that's very neutral where you're not doing something super exciting that's going to damper the mood of the day or doing or being really angry and spiteful like just do like have this conversation on a very neutral day you know um and figure it out but the only way you're going to be able to figure it out is if you have that discussion in the first place you know what I'm saying I think you know what I'm saying Okay, next question. Oh, that was the last question. The next question was just a picture of my was just a picture of my labradoodle. I wish I could show you, but it's black and white, but Alrighty. Um That concludes this very eventful episode of Unholy and Curious, where I gave you guys my very frank drunk slightly drunk I'm not that drunk I'm like just a little tipsy dating advice um love sex and relationship dating advice I hope that was helpful to you I hope that was helpful to whoever's watching um I know that sometimes like being very matter of fact like this is not like the easiest thing to handle or the easiest thing to listen to but sometimes you just need somebody to give it to you straight and I am the bitch to give it to you straight. So to everybody out there watching who found this useful or didn't find this useful, I hope that you are happy and have a successful love life. Um, And if not, go fuck yourself. I hope you never get laid ever again. And I hope that you um, die alone. Just kidding. Um, But anyways... That concludes this episode of Romance Rescue and this episode of Unholy and Curious. And until the next time, good luck and use protection and don't fuck guys who have 
pierced dicks. You'll thank me later.